as someone who's been both a cloud engineer and a software engineer, uh, and sometimes both at the same time, I really wonder which job description or job title is better for entry level, or which one should you choose as someone that's coming in that is an entry level person in technology. I know the landscape in technology can be pretty hard to navigate now with the conflation of different job titles, whether it's back-end engineering going into full-stack engineering or front-end engineering needing to learn back-end to become full-stack or someone that specializes in databases needing to learn back-end and front-end to become full-stack or someone that's been in DevOps needing to now learn things that could be considered a cloud engineer. There's a lot of crossover between different job titles and it can be pretty daunting as someone that's coming in uh, as an entry-level technology technologist needing to choose their first job description to get their career started. So I hope I can explain to you guys the difference between cloud engineering and full stack or software engineering and which you should pick given your specific skill sets. So as a software engineer, you can typically expect to be building applications from top to bottom. Now, what I mean by that is you can go from one day building cloud infrastructure that's going to be in charge of scaling and hosting your application to the next day building backend code that's going to be handling the bulk of your logic to do some sort of data manipulation. And then the next day you could be doing something with UI, uh, UX on the front end. Um, it, it really is going to vary in terms of what the necessity is for that team and what kind of tickets are coming in from either users, internal or external. Uh, a lot of teams that I've been a part of, we usually have specializations. Now we're all full stack engineers or just software engineers in general, meaning that we have you know, prowess in different certain types of technologies, but a lot of people on the team specialize in one thing or another. So for example, myself, I usually like to do a lot of backend slash cloud or infrastructure development, whereas other people on the team have an eye for UI UX. So when tickets come in where we have to mock something out in Figma, a developer with that sort of skill set will take it over someone like me who's more backend or infrastructure focused. I will say it's really going to be dependent on the actual size of the company. For example, I'm on a team of eight engineers, so we usually have a good Good, you know, flow of tickets coming in, and we usually just grab them from there based on the given skill set that one would need for that specific ticket. But as a cloud engineer, you're going to have a lot of different responsibilities when it comes to the actual work that you're putting in. All of it's going to be centrally focused around your knowledge of cloud and how you interface with the cloud, but it's going to be a little bit more divorced from the actual programming or technology skill set that you might think you have to have. I'm not saying that programming doesn't play a huge role in cloud engineering because it does, but I think. In general, you can get away with being a much less proficient programmer as a cloud engineer than you could as a software engineer because there's going to be a lot less eyes on your actual code. And for the most part, again, speaking in generalities, you're not going to be working with other very senior level engineers who are going to be doing a lot of code review. And you're not going to be required to write as many stringent tests as you would be when you're working in a full stack environment. Now, there could be some caveats to that actual description, whether you're working at a FANG company or a big company that has a, special, a specialized cloud division. I've never worked at one of those companies, so I can't really speak of that. But in my experience, as a cloud engineer, you're going to be having daily tasks of spinning up monitoring and logging, uh, automating compliance, automating processes, spinning up servers for customers, both internal and external. You're going to be uh, in charge of actually creating infrastructure that's going to be responsible for hosting or scaling applications, although that could also be used uh, or it could be also given to full stack engineers. It really depends on the company that you're at. But anything that you're doing is going to be heavily involved in the cloud and you can expect to be using your specific cloud environment uh, provider on a daily basis. Now there is a lot of variation to the two different job descriptions that I just gave. Some cloud engineering companies or some Companies that employ cloud engineers will have them work more like DevOps, where they're going to do site reliability. They're going to be doing a lot of hosting and scaling, whereas other companies, specifically government contractors, are going to be having you guys take tickets. You're going to be spinning up servers. You're going to be uh, creating infrastructure baselines, uh, monitoring and logging, compliance and all that kind of stuff, which does involve a bit of programming. But you can also get away with not being a proficient programmer because you can also spin these things up in the actual grass, graphical user interface of your specific provider. So if you're someone that is just getting into programming, but you are very well versed in technology, I would definitely recommend you going towards a cloud engineering job description because you can build up your programming skills set while you're also providing value to the team that you're actually on. So for example, you could take a ticket that, you know, 10 users need to be created with X amount of permissions. You can go do that. And in the meantime, you can be working on your Python programming or JavaScript 
or TypeScript or, or whatever your code of choice is. Uh, whereas a full stack engineer, usually from day one, you're going to be expected to familiarize yourself with the code base, understand code at a syntax level, and be able to provide assistance to specific kinds of tickets for your team. Um, not saying that's every single shop that you're going to be going to. A lot of them will give you kind of like a startup period where you can go through the code base, ask a ton of dumb questions, which are actually pretty helpful questions, um, and familiarize yourself from there. But in reality, you are going to be have to you are going to have to put hands on the keyboard to actually create meaningful code that can help users, that can help internal users or solve internal issues. Uh, so some of my real world examples of different types of you know jobs that you could have as both a cloud and a software engineer. So in one of my very first jobs as a software engineer, I was in charge of the uptime of an application. Again, this is a very small startup. I think it was one of two engineers. I was in charge of everything. So I was in charge of you know, scaling the infrastructure. I was in charge of uptime. I was in charge of any bugs or any downtime that was happening in the application. I was also in charge of building backend code for new features, building backend code um, for other features or other teams that were needed because it was part of a law firm. Uh, I was in charge of monitoring, logging, uh, front end, UI, UX, mocking, all that kind of stuff, and also presenting the final product to the actual client, getting their feedback, and then incorporating that into the application. That is one extreme of full stack or software engineering. Whereas another example I would have as a cloud engineer when I was working for the Department of Defense, um, I would take in tickets from various different customers, I would spin up servers, or if it was a longer you know, engagement where they wanted some sort of compliance baseline, that's where my actual coding prowess would come in where I would build a you know, compliance stack that could help them spin up monitoring and logging on specific servers or instances. Or, you know, I would even sometimes be in charge of scaling their infrastructure with things like Kubernetes or ECS or container services or Docker. But that was really on the edge cases of that job. A lot of my daily time was spent on me spinning up servers, making sure configurations were correct, making sure my logging and monitoring code bases were not having any drift detected in them. Um, it really wasn't something where I had a lot of eyes on the actual programs or the actual software I was writing. No one was coming in and scrutinizing the code that I was writing. And I'm pretty sure if you look back at that code, I think it's six years ago now, um, I would think it's probably some of the ugliest code I've ever written in my life. But it did get me the ability to learn programming as I was still offering value as a cloud engineer to a bunch of different customers, both internal with my own team and external with uh, users. So if you're someone that really doesn't know what they want to do in the technology space, but you know you want to do something that has to do with programming and cloud and all these cool buzzwords that you're hearing nowadays, I would definitely recommend that you go into cloud engineering, at least at an entry level, because there are a lot more ways that you can have impact that don't directly correlate with you writing beautiful software or writing meaningful software right out of the gate. Whereas if you're someone that wants to be in computer science and wants to write software every single day, Software engineering, without a doubt, is going to be for you. I'm not saying cloud engineering couldn't be for you in the future, but cloud engineering at an entry level sometimes lacks the fundamental programming that a lot of people love when they want to solve problems. A lot of times you're going to be stuck doing somewhat operations work 50% of the time, and then maybe the other 50% you can focus on writing beautiful solutions that clients could ask for and show off your programming prowess. But cloud engineering at the same time is going to give you, at least at an entry level, that ability to upscale your programming ability while you're still offering value to your clients. So it's really up to you which one you wanna pick. I think both are great at an entry level. If I had to go back and choose again, I would definitely start at the same path that I already was. I started as a full stack software engineer or a software engineer, and then I went into more of specialized cloud engineering on a software development team where they kind of sent me tickets that were very cloud focused so I could use a lot of the programming knowledge that I had built as a software engineer to then build those solutions as a cloud engineer. But it's really up to you. It's really up to what your goals are or what your strengths are when you're first coming out of college or when you're first first coming out of high school trying to get into the workforce. Again, if programming is your thing and you want to be heads down every single day solving problems and getting better, I really recommend full stack engineering. But if you want to solve problems and you want to be able to provide value while you upscale your actual programming knowledge, or if you don't feel fully comfortable with a language like Python or JavaScript or TypeScript or Rust or any of these languages, I think cloud engineering might be a liaison to the technology sphere, specifically the engineering sphere, because you can, again, like I said, still offer value to clients while you're upscaling your actual programming prowess so that when you are ready to go for your full stack engineer, uh, positions, or if you're ready in general to, you know, 
upskill and become a mid-level cloud engineer, you can also do that. I've noticed that a lot of more technical job descriptions come from mid-level cloud engineers to DevOps, and then right off the get-go from full-stack engineering, that's gonna be highly technical in and of itself. One thing to note when you're actually interviewing for these two different job descriptions, cloud engineering is gonna be a lot more theoretical in my opinion. I have had jobs for cloud engineering where I had to do a little bit of lead code, usually like easy problems. And then I kind of had to just talk about my experience with building solutions and possibly have a take home project to show that I could build something in the cloud. Whereas with full stack engineering, you're almost always going to have a technical interview, whether it's systems design, uh, algorithms with lead code or some other platform they may use, and maybe even some sort of technical uh, take-home project where they want to see you build some sort of small, scaled, full application to show that you actually know what you say you know. That might be something that's really easy for a low barrier to entry for people who aren't ready for those technical interviews. Cloud engineering usually is not going to make you take one of those. Again, like I said, it could give you some easy lead code problems, but as far as I know, and as far as I've seen from my experience, even as a mid-level cloud engineer, I was not really asked to do a ton of you know, hard level, you know, algorithms on lead code or anything like that. But with full stack engineering, every single job that I've had, even ones that I've had where I switched internally from full, uh, from cloud engineering to full stack, I did have to do technical interviews with systems design algorithms. It's just kind of par for the course. So if that's something that kind of scares you when you're going into a job interview, that might be something that you take into consideration and it helps you choose which job that you want first. But hey, these are all just my thoughts. If you have any questions or any comments or anything I left out, definitely leave it down in the comments below. If you wanna follow me on all my socials, they're down in the description below. I'm currently working on a GraphQL TypeScript React course uh, for full stack engineering with serverless. Uh, I know it's a bit of a soy dev course, but I think it's really something that could help you guys spin up your own projects, build your own websites, and possibly get your first job as a software engineer. I think it'll be really helpful. It'll be mainly focused on the back end because I'm not really a front end guru. I don't want to pretend that I am and show you guys some sort of outdated technology that I might have to piece together just to get by with my React code. But that, that course is going to be out towards the end of the month. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I don't phase out on that one. But if that's something you guys are interested in, Follow me on my socials in the description below to keep up to date with the progress I'm making on the course. I guarantee I'm going to be late with it, but just bear with me anyway, and I will see you guys in the next video.